Welcome to Recap King Expilin? Okay, good. So Smile is a horror film that wipes the smile off your face and gives you two hours of terror. In this video, we'll explain the finale, discuss its possible hidden meaning, and go over some of the eerie aspects that take it to the next level. The film is based on the shirt Laura hasn't slept, which sadly has been largely removed from the internet so that it can appear on the Blu-ray. It still adheres to that shirt's fundamental structure, but it grows and changes. It's very similar with Smile, and during the initial portion of the video, I thought we'd explain what the entity actually is before getting closer and closer till they were vanquished or the curse prevailed. This entity attaches itself to trauma sufferers and progressively tortures them over time while remaining indetectable to others. When it does expose itself, it does it with a spooky smile. The creature's entire strategy is to make its victims psychologically vulnerable so that the pony may fully possess them and force them to commit suicide. It typically does this in front of another person, wherein the curse is then transferred to them. Path instead than through you the character in Smile has many layers, and in my opinion, the creature's eye view serves as a powerful metaphor for mental health. In the film, we learn that Rose's mother passed away when she was very young and that Rose could have possibly prevented this by calling 911, but she chose not to, and as a result, her mother has been mistakenly labeled as a suicide victim. My therapist brings up this information to help explain what's happening, but Rose buries this further inside. Rose, tortured mentally, the monster presents as a cheerful person, and I believe that this is where the double meaning lies. People like Robin Williams have drawn attention to the fact that those who are depressed rarely show signs of it on the outside. Now, from my own experience, where I can push my own depression to the back of my mind when I'm in public to try and seem happy, I think the fact that people take their own lives and the mental torture that precedes it is what makes me believe that. Another feature that permeates the entire movie is a smile. Although smiles are typically used to depict happiness, they have been darkened in this instance. Now we even see a scene in which the characters are forced to smile in order to maintain appearances at the restaurant they have an argument but when the food is put down they smile and act like everything's normal while well, I think that there's an analysis of smiles here to show they can often be used to appear a certain way rather than being sincere my take from it is that smiles can often be used to appear a certain way rather than being sincere. Her fiancé texts her a smiley face emoji, and the cat is also called Mustache, which sits above a SM mouth like a smiler um I said there would be reaches now this cat is killed by either Rose or the monster possessing her, it's displayed at her nephew's birthday party, where it was presented. Carl smiles at her before screaming she's going to die. Stepping away from it, but after hour is cursed, we zoom in again to show how she's revisiting this. After a session with her therapist, we see him practice smiling in the mirror while attempting to conceal how he really feels. The birthday party goes poorly, and Rose again notices the creatures smiling at her. She then goes to the hospital, where we see a pain assessment tool that is laced with smiles. At this point, things start to fall into place with the R. Interestingly, Jill is the next person to receive the curse, but he has a head start on how to break it. As she leaves her sisters, we notice her nephew staring at her. I did search for demons that originated in South America, but there weren't any that really matched it. However, if you know any, then make sure to drop them in the comments below after returning home. He claims that he found an instant years ago in Brazil, potentially showing the roots of the demon. Rose is once again visited by her therapist, who we later discover is actually the demon posing as her. This is the ultimate act of betrayal and demonstrates how cunning the creature is. Weaponizing in order to pass on the curse, Rose decides to murder Call. Whether or not she hallucinates the entire event, we get a big face off like Nick Cage in Travolta because of Rose's mental health. She chooses Carl, a mental health patient, rather than picking someone else because she believes that he is more important than others despite the fact that he did not harm her and that she has more in common with Carl than with any other person. However, in her defense, she chooses not to carry out her plan and instead goes to her. When she finally passes away, a trip down memory lane occurs in which he confronts her past traumas. The creature assumes the form of her mother and reveals that it got into her mind because it was so inviting. 
She was obviously weakened by the trauma, and the end result is that he says that she can't escape her own mind. This is so that she can end the curse without anyone else coming into contact with her. Rose appears to regain control and douses him in flames before he leaves the house, but this is a falsehood that she discovers when she visits Jail's place. Another of the creature's tactics, but the entire monologue she delivers is essentially a statement about how she puts up walls because of her past. The movie reveals that Rose hasn't actually left the house and she sees the creature's true format, and I actually kind of like this being the ending over what we get, but again that's down to my preference of the supernatural force being more of a metaphor your mileage may vary on air. The real Joe arrives and we see the curses passed on, we get a zoom in on his eye, and this is similar to what happened when the curse was passed to Rose, it's very much his sort of journey into his mind again showing the mental health metaphor now Jill will inherit it, but H, how will she deal with the guilt and regret she feels over her mother? This is also another reason why she couldn't sell a house. That Rose did this could work in his favor, but he has just witnessed the love of his life burn herself alive in front of him, which is enough to make anyone's day miserable. I would have shot Rose if I had seen the match come out, but who knows where we'll go from here. Anyway, the movie is over, and of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we learned from it. Please share them in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more videos that will make you smile. Right now, we're giving away 3 copies of Top Gameric on November 15th. All you have to do to enter is like the video, turn on notifications, and leave a comment below with your thoughts on the F. For more information, message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you're looking for something else to watch, be sure to check out one of our breakdowns linked on screen right now. We have one for Barbarian if you want a deeper meaning on that, so yeah, definitely head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sticking with the video, I've been Paul. I'll see you next time.